Hello, everybody. Can you hear me well? Yes, okay. So thank you very much, everybody, for attending this admission webinar. We are so glad of being here with you just to share the beauties of our program, MIT Supply Chain Management Master Program. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your interest and your motivation to apply your program. And hopefully we will be able to convince you about why to apply to, to this program. But feel free to include your questions in the, in the chat. We will monitor the chat. Um, probably we will answer the questions at the end. But uh, yeah, this is this is the, the idea. Let's, let's start. So this is the agenda for today. We are going to describe why and why supply chain management is a hot topic today. And I mean, what does this include? And then we will discuss, I mean, how do we cover this uh, talent market in the market with our professional outcomes and professional services in our MIT supply chain management program? Then we will have a program overview. What is the content? What are what is the dynamics and the sequence during this 10-month intensive program? And then how to apply, and then to describe what is the MIT experience, something that our graduates really value. Uh, they value a lot when they are here with us at MIT and also when 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 they leave this this miss uh the MIT experience is missed uh, a lot. So let's start. I mean, I guess that you are here because then you love the topic of supply chain management. It's a hot topic. And then uh, this is why the demand of professionals in this field is so high. Supply chain management has been during the last, let's say, three years, two years and a half, I would say, then a very hot topic. Uh, the Unfortunately, COVID, the disruptions that had happened have, um, have brought, I mean, supply chain into the top of the agendas of all the companies. Several supply chain directors or chief supply chain officers, they have been promoted to lead the organizations, which means that the supply chain is a great way to grow, is a great way to impact in the operations in the business and uh, even in society as well, as, as we will see now. So here you have several... Um, I mean, pieces of, of news extracted from the newspapers about why supply chain has been so impactful, especially uh, in the global landscape. Um, then, I mean, all these disruptions with the containers we had, all the problems with COVID, now all the, the high demand and high expectation from the customers to deliver the products as soon as, 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 as the companies uh, can, uh, as soon as we can. And then, so it means that supply chain is important. Supply chain is a hot topic and supply chain, again, impacts uh, the industry and impacts the, the world. Huh? So how do we understand the supply chain domain here at MIT? We understand from the educational point of view in our master in supply chain management, we understand as, a, as an experiential learning approach. Then, all of us, all of these instructors that we are teaching in our master program, we conduct, apply research, working closely with the most impactful industries, most impactful supply chain departments worldwide. And then we, we provide um, good insights about how to shape the different angles, the different areas of supply chain management. Here are some examples. Um, the first one is Digital Supply Chain Transformation Lab. It's my, my lab, but it's, it's the first one, no, because it's the most important one, because it's the it first in the, in the, uh, in the again, in, in the sequence that, uh, that we follow. Mm -hmm. So then we have other labs that are having great impact, food and retail operations lab, freight lab, of course, in the humanitarian domain all over the world, we are having a good impact with the humanitarian supply chain lab. Mega City Logistics Lab with the last mile delivery approach they followed, both from AI, machine learning, sustainability is a hot topic, absolutely. Innovation from many different angles. What can I talk about resilience? Um, and then the Visual Analytics uh, Lab, uh, what we call CAVE. Different books, different publications in different um, magazines, but also academic journals. Then this, this shows what is the impact that we are doing here at the 
MIT Center for Transportation and Logistics. So the center that is the umbrella of all these uh, laboratories that we are having here at MIT. So again, supply chain is important, it's a hot topic, it's impactful topic. Then we approach this uh, the development of talent for this supply chain topic, thanks to all the applied research that we are doing in our labs. And then we provide a great professional outcome service, professional service um, while the students are here with us at MIT. Uh, and this is a summary of what we are doing. John, maybe you would like to elaborate a little bit more about our professional development? Yeah, absolutely, Maria. So hi. Coordinating logistics for the current class, um, sort of on the academic and program management side of things. Um, and yeah, I'll talk a little bit about the professional development stuff here. And again, feel free if you have questions, throw them in the Q&A. Uh, we'll get to as many of them as we can along the way or at the end of the presentation. Um, so we offer a bunch of professional development services. We have two absolutely amazing career counselors, uh, Justin Snow and Len Morrison. They aren't joining us today, but if you come to our program, you'll see them a lot. We have students meeting with them sometimes weekly to work on uh, both interview prep, the job search, networking, reaching out to alumni strategies for all of that. It's a very customized kind of personal service. We benefit from being a pretty small cohort program. Um, so we're able to really work one on one with students in that way. Uh, we send resume books out to companies. We have companies come in for career sessions um, and our student ambassadors who are joining us today. will have them introduce themselves after we've gone through the presentation and they'll I'm sure be able to talk a lot more about sort of the career process and and sort of looking forward from the program what that looks like um, we benefit from a really strong alumni network as well so we have a lot of ties to different global companies um, both around the us and around the world uh, next slide maria yep <clears throat> here we go all right, so we have had some really great employment outcomes um, consistently and especially over the last few years. Uh, this is based on last year's class data. So this is actual the actual average base salary from the residential class last year. Um, as you can see, it's pretty strong base salary, uh, and that's before we include uh, bonuses, stock incentives, those kinds of um, benefits as well. And yeah, we had 97% of students who were looking for a job had received an offer by graduation. Um, and one of the things I really want to highlight is the ROI on the program. Um, in when you're evaluating the tuition of our program, the affordability, loans, all of those things, it's a really big calculation. Uh, but we really want to highlight the, the ROI of coming to the program in terms of the boost that people see in their careers and how this program pays back for itself. So it's important to factor all of those in. Everyone's situation is unique, but as you as you're evaluating it, I hope you take those numbers into consideration. And we have all this information on our website, so feel free to explore there as well and go through it. Next slide. All right, and so you can see a little bit of a breakdown of jobs. Um, we have a lot of students who are interested in consulting and tech. That's made up a huge portion of our, um, of our outcomes last year. As you can see, it's around 90%, um, but we do have more traditional roles in consumer packaged goods and energy and pharma as well. Really, it's what you're interested in. We're going to help you find those roles. And really, just the student interest the past couple of years has um, really gravitated towards consulting and technology, which is why those are so strongly represented. But students who are interested in other fields haven't had trouble finding jobs in those fields as well. It just really depends on their background. Like we have someone who comes from pharma and is interested in continuing on in pharma we're absolutely able to work with that as well. Um, Maria, it looks like we just lost the presentation. Yeah, yeah. I, I try to get yeah, to, to move something and yeah, no, here we go. Yeah. Gotcha. <laughs> no worries. Um, and so the last thing um, is just going on to the rankings from the program. We are the number one ranked uh, supply chain management program in the world from QS and from Ed Universal, which is really huge. Um, we've, we're really proud of that ranking. We've been able to maintain it several years in a row now, uh, but last year we we maintained that ranking as well. Um, and so we think that that also stands out and people recognize that when they see that you're coming from MIT, um, they recognize both the MIT brand itself, but also that this is the number one ranked supply chain management master's program. And so that's a huge part of sort of the outcomes as well. Um, as the education too, we were number one ranked for a reason. It's not just the outcomes, it's also the quality of the education here. All right, I'll pass it back over to you, Maria. I think you're gonna take the next section. Yes, uh, thank you, John. Um, uh, quick comments here. So then the, being number one means 
uh, means a lot, right? And implies a lot of different things. So then every year we are implementing innovation in order to try to adapt what we are teaching, uh, the experience that we are providing into the latest expectations from the industry. All this connection with industry that we are having at MIT CTL is so important in order to adapt and align all our master program into the latest expectations from the industry in terms of topics, in terms of experience, in terms, for example, the combination of analytics and new technology together with the expectations in terms of recruiting, in terms of global impact, et cetera. So then I think it's important. Um, one of you asked if we are going to cover the SEM blended program. Yes, we are going to cover the blended program with deadlines and then with expectations in terms of timings. So yes, absolutely yes. Um, okay, then uh, so let me continue with the presentation. What is the program overview? So uh, then again, we will differentiate between residential cohort and blended pro cohort. Probably you know already about all these different, but let me present in a nutshell what is, what is the core features of each of the two options. The two, uh, uh, um, I mean, cohorts, they, they get the same degree. MIT's uh, Master in Applied Science in Supply Chain Management, uh, Master degree, uh, I mean, um, some of you, you can, I mean, obtain uh, the Master of Engineering, but I will comment this in, in at the end of the of the presentation. The residential cohort on your left is 10 month uh, intensive on campus master program full time. So connecting what John mentioned about the ROI return, return of investment is important to note that then you will be uh, only 10 months out of your, I mean, of your work. And then you will come back to the same position or maybe to find a new position uh, thanks to the, um, again, recruiting services that we are providing. It is typically designed for early career supply chain professionals. Um, typically, we are having around five years of experience, supply chain experience in the residential cohort. Mm -hmm. And then we are quite strong in career development. During all these 10 months that you are here at MIT, then we are working one-to-one -one with each of you in order to customize how you should uh, approach the, um, the, the job market. And then the, with this cohort, you are eligible to OPT. Uh, we are a STEM program. This means that then you have work authorization to work in the US. Mm -hmm. This is one of the main difference with the blended, with the blended due to the fact that uh, the students will be only five months in campus at MIT, then blended cohort is not eligible to OPT. Hmm? But then there are a lot of other great opportunities here. You can find a job uh, outside, uh, I mean, uh, US, if you are not a US uh, work, um, you don't have work authorization. Then we, the intention is to provide an alternative pathway to um, um, a master degree in supply chain management. So first, you need to complete the micro master degree. Uh, the, it's a, a credential offered by MIT X um, online. So then, once you get this certificate, once you finish your um, certificate after the CFX exam, comprehensive exam, then you are eligible to apply. Our deadlines for applications are aligned with the dates for the CFX. Huh? So typically twice a year. Hmm? Uh, when you complete this, then you are eligible to apply. And then if you are accepted, you come to MIT for the five months on campus at MIT. So then you will get exactly the same degree than the residential program. Actually, this is the idea. In January, all the two uh, cohorts get together in order to create a one cohesive, unique uh, class. Typically, the experience for the blended programs the blended cohort is around seven years average experience in in, in the world um, and sorry in, in the job or in supply chain area. So it's a great collection of experience. We want to use your experience in order to create a collective learning approach uh, within uh, within our program, within our classes and discussions. Yeah. And all this, what is the purpose? This this is the purpose. This is our value proposition to develop world-class global leaders in supply chain management with an innovative MIT educational model. Every single word here has a meaning. Global means that then we want to impact the world. 
leaders is that we want to combine different, I mean, features in supply chain together with the leadership approach in order to develop your leadership potential while you are here. And all these innovative MIT experiential learning educational model, um, especially connected with the MIT ecosystem. It's completely different with other uh, universities. And then definitely once our um, students, they graduate, they, they have a different way of thinking, different way of approaching the challenges, the, the problems, and especially the supply chain um, endeavors. So yeah, definitely uh, a, a great opportunity for you. Uh, what is the timeline? Let's start with the residential program timeline. Ten, remember, 10 month in-person intensive program. We start typically once you have, you are accepted, we have the onboarding, May, July with different webinars. So you are ready to join us in August. In August, you come here to MIT. Previously, you have been working on all the onboarding, accommodation, all your selections, etc. During the orientation in August, it's a two weeks, two weeks and a half uh, intensive program. Then in which we uh, work around some recruiting preparation. We introduce the capstone projects, uh, some analytical content and exam just for you to be ready to start with the core um, terms at MIT. So we, you start the fall term from September to December with different courses. You have a long list, actually 300 different electives you can select out of the MIT ecosystem. Uh, with a, for a certain structure, of course. Then you have the spring, sorry, the winter break from December to January. And in January, we have a beautiful feature in which we receive a scale of students from all over the world. We uh, gather 200 supply chain professionals at MIT during this three week period. And then we are having workshops, speakers, CEOs, chef supply chain officers from global industries, they are coming to share their, their, again, their insights, their experience. And then we have research expo in which you present your capsule project. In the spring, then um, we start from February to May with typically we call the uh, electives period in which you have different classes, um, a study track, for example, this year, actually in 10 days, we go to San Francisco in order to connect with the alumni network that is there and visit companies like Google, like uh, Flex, Walmart, um, and then also to Panama to visit all the logistics operations of Panama Canal. This is, this is really great, really exciting, and uh, a, a time for co making great connections and bonds uh, within the MIT supply chain management class. Also, during this spring term, you will work with uh, uh, our um, coaches for career, for just to customize your journey. Of course, the capstone project, research project, and the final event in which we are presenting all over the world your uh, results with your uh, research project with your capstone project and finally uh, then you got into the graduation and end of may this is a very very special day i can tell you this picture i mean gathers a lot of energy in front of the mit dome with all your best uh, i mean achievements you are so proud your family is so proud of your achievements and uh, yeah typically most of the class have already received an offer so then you are ready to impact uh, the world. Yeah. Let's talk about the blended program. Uh, did you remember five months in campus uh, previous to these five months uh, online education? It's a hybrid mode, yeah? the same degree than the residential MIT uh, master degree. So then we start, we you start with, as I mentioned, with the five online classes, the final comprehensive exam called CFX. And then once you get your certificate, you are eligible to apply to our um, supply chain management blended master program, right? So then the application opens, opens typically in September, but is together with the CFX. Huh? We have different admission decisions, and I will share all the, the key deadlines at the end of the webinar, right? So then we have all the admissions cycle from September to July, and then 
in, in July after the second CFX, um, the, or the second, I mean, the, the typically May CFX, then you apply and then quickly we review the applications and we have the class ready to start. So uh, in from August to December in a remote mode, Mm -hmm. Then we work in different aspects. We, we have conducted some pre-work. So then you start your capstone project. We offer companies to work with, but also you bring your own company with your own capstone. So it's a mix of options. Then you follow different webinar series in, uh, in data management, in um, analytics methodologies, et cetera. So is, is this are kind of webinar is a preparatory work in order for you to be ready in January to join the scale um, uh, connect conference. I already mentioned three weeks at MIT with 200 students all over the world. So then physically, the first day you are physically here with us is the beginning of January if you are a blended student. Mm -hmm. But previously you have gathered all this knowledge with the MIT MicroMaster credential. And then we have been working with you, especially from August till January, you join us physically in person, right? So then in January, we have all your orientation, especially for the blended. Also, we prepared you analytically to be ready for the content. And then with all the scale connect um, uh, events. Again, in the spring, you are exactly the same student than the residential student. So then a long list of electives, you can customize your journey. Imagine that you want to focus more on sustainability topics, or you want to develop more your leadership potential, or you want to focus more, let's say, on the healthcare industry. So then you can customize your journey. Huh? We help you to structure this with all these electives. And at the end, the same date, than the residential, all the 80 students, 40 from the residential, 40 from the blended, they get together in the graduation in order to get your MIT um, Master um, of Applied Science degree. Yeah, and it's again, very, very exciting. Um, so let me continue with the curriculum. Hmm? Then it depends if you are residential or you are blended, this will vary. Huh? But the idea is that if you are residential, you will be in person taking these courses, hmm? five subjects, analytical methods, logistic systems, databases, uh, financial supply chain finances, very important for supply chain. Uh, then writing supply chain management, and then you start the very beginning in August with a capstone project. Hmm? You can take one elective. Huh? And then at IAP, I mean, January is the scale connect, as I already mentioned. You continue with your custom project. And in the spring, you can have a long list of selection, uh, oh, sorry, of electives with, um, and additionally, of these uh, electives in supply chain and analytics. But additionally, we are going to work intensively in data science and material learning. And then some additional topics like advanced writing, public speaking, et cetera. You will finish your capstone project with your sponsor company, and then you will have um, uh, definitely 100% of the students get more than 90 units. 90 units is the minimum, but typically, while, while I mean, when the students are here, they select more than 90 units in order to maximize their exposure to the MIT knowledge and MIT experience. And then we are very flexible in the number of units that you can you can take. Yeah. Okay, then we are offering different uh, topics around supply chain electives. So then again, you have here the list, you have here the instructors, you can go to the website and see where are their speciality and the angle, all of us, all of us, we are working closely with industry. Uh, and then we teach uh, in this master program, but also in executive education programs and also in, in other programs within MIT. So our experience in terms of education, in terms of applied research is quite rich in our uh, field of domain. Uh, this is what we want to connect with you. So the capstone project, the capstone project is an important element in our curriculum. Uh, why? Because as I mentioned, then the, to develop experiential learning approaches in our program, is the one of the most beautiful feature. And the idea is the following. We, you bring your experience in supply chain, 
typically an average of five years of experience, residential and blended. Then uh, in different areas, different industries, we want to take advantage of this experience and how we are doing that. We are putting in the different courses, different experiential learning exercises, for example, case studies, uh, assignments in a real case with industry. Then we are gathering data from real industry so then you manage and then you, you, you deal with their data in order to translate into managerial recommendations. So again, different layers of experiential learnings and then one in different areas, different courses. And then the overall umbrella is the capstone. The capstone project is a, a real project sponsored by a real company with a real challenge. Um, it is it's scoped within nine months, nine and a half months um, so then we are crafting a team of two students uh, sponsor, sorry, uh, sponsored by a real company that can be provided or facilitated by uh, us, by MIT, or in the blended case, then you can bring your company as well. Then we allocate one or two researchers from MIT who are advisors and they have a special I mean, um, experience and expertise in the area of the capsule project. And during these nine, 10 months, then you are working along different deliverables in order to propose a particular, uh, I mean, solution for this particular challenge. Huh? So then you work again on the particular uh, motivation. This is an example that I was advising with Lenovo. Uh, it was about uh, supply chain segmentation and all the analytics we did for that. And then we work about the objectives. Then, of course, you review the literature with the state of the art. And then you apply certain methodology with different rounds in the methodology. Then you provide typically um, managerial recommendations or framework or something that is extracted out of all this um, methodology that you have applied then you typically have a main, main insights and then uh, your contributions. Eh? So some, uh, the, the, I would say, a selection of capstone projects are finally published in Supply Chain Management Review magazine that has a great exposure and is a great way of uh, impacting all over the world with the results of your projects. Yeah, this 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 publication in Supply Chain Management Review magazine is coming after the finish after you finish the uh, the capstone project uh, after end of May. Yeah. Okay. The application process. John, would you like to go into this topic? Yeah, absolutely. All right. So we can go on to the next slide. I'll talk a little bit about the application process for both programs. Um, this will just be a brief overview. If questions come up. Feel free to ask them right now during the Q&A, um, or you can always reach out to our email, scm-admissions at mit.edu. So our application requirements. Uh, for the residential class, we do have a test requirement. You can take the GMAT or the GRE. Either of those work. Or you can take the first MicroMasters course, SC0X Supply Chain Analytics. Any of them are considered equally by our department. Um, we do prefer SC0X just because if you are admitted to the program, we're going to have you take SC0X before you arrive on campus anyways, so you get that requirement out of the way. Saves you a little time if you're admitted. Um, but we don't bias against any of the um, any test against the other. We evaluate all of them equally. Uh, you only have to submit one, so just SC0X, the GMAT, or the GRE. That's one of the biggest questions we get. Um, you can see the average score for SC0X. The minimum is 85%. Um, if your score is lower, you still can apply. We just suggest that as the minimum for a competitive application, but you're not barred from applying. We evaluate applications holistically. Um, similarly, the 75th percentile for the GMAT and the GRE. Um, so you're going to have that, and you're going to have a written statement of objectives. Those are unique to the residential class. For the blended class, we're going to evaluate your MicroMasters performance. And instead of a statement of objectives, you're also going to submit a research project proposal. So this will be a proposal for your capstone project. And usually students are uh, proposing these with the company that they're working at currently. That's not a requirement, though. We get this question a lot, too. You don't have to submit a proposal that you actually have agreement from a company to work on. It could be from a company that you're interested in working with. And it's an interesting research proposal idea that you think is a strong mm -hmm prospect, but you don't actually have to have the agreement to work with the company. The details of the proposal and how to write it are all on the website as well. Um, so we do re require uh, an I I 
<laughs> excuse me, IELTS or TOEFL requirement um, for anyone who's not from an English speaking country. Um, that said, there is a waiver if you went to uh, an undergraduate or graduate program that was taught primarily in English, then you can receive a waiver from the TOEFL requirement. There's a video statement um, that's conducted during the actual application process. Um, it's, it's part of the application system. We'll want to see your resume, and we do require at least two years of work experience, preferably supply chain related work experience. We prefer three to seven years of work experience from applicants, but the minimum we accept is two. If you have less than two at the time of your application, we, we will let you know that you're not eligible to apply to the program. Um, we also require two letters of recommendation. Uh, we, those can be both professional or one academic, one professional. We just ask that they're both not, not both academic. We want to hear from some professional experience and we require your uh, transcript as well from any undergraduate or graduate degrees. All right, next slide. Yes, John, um, oh, yeah. I, I would like to highlight something about video statement. Mm -hmm. I mean, bring yourself, don't try to package yourself in something that you are not. Right, so for us, is you we want to know a little bit more about yourself in the video, right? Some applicants prefer to be very formal and to read. For example, we don't recommend to read a script, right? So then bring yourself, the best of yourself, right? Very natural about what you are. Eh? This is the main purpose of, of, of the video, not a formal kind of, I mean, uh, recipe kind of, uh, I mean, video. Okay, this is one of the recommendations. And the others, just to bring your, your uh, credentials. Yeah. All right. So just a couple of key dates for the comprehensive final exam. Um, if you're currently looking to apply in blended round two, uh, the comprehensive final exam is scheduled to start on May 10th. The end um, date to take it will be on May 11th this year. Uh, and the first live event, which that QR code that's on the screen right now is a link to information about, that happens on the 3rd of April. Um, so if you must have already passed all five SCX courses to be verified to be eligible, um, if you are eligible, we will automatically enroll you in the CFX and let you know that you're um, eligible to take it. And then if you plan to take it, you can pay the verification fee by April 26th. Uh, we'll and so those dates are important if you're looking to take the CFX this May and then apply in blended round two. And we'll get to the application dates in just a moment. Yeah, so then let me highlight something. Considering how close the date of the CFX and the uh, blended applications are, we strongly recommend you, if you plan to apply to the blended, to try to start the blended application even before of making the CFX exam. This is a recommendation, for example, if you start thinking about the research project proposal, we will explain in a minute, or then if you start thinking about what could be the best referees for your recommendations. So then you start up preparing all this work. So then once you pass the CFX, that I am sure you will because you are highly motivated, then uh, then you will be able to apply. And if something happens, you have time to, to fulfill the deadline. Okay, then we will recap this later. Yeah. So application tips. <laughs> Thanks for adding oh, them. Yeah, the video. Sorry, I advanced these, John. No worries. <laughs> yeah, this is just reiterating what Maria said earlier. Just be yourself. Um, we really want to get a sense of who you are from the video statement. And this, we've changed the system. This actually, the video is recorded online in the application system itself. So you'll see that as part of your application. There will be a tab to record the video. Um, and then, like I was saying, work experience, we really have a hard requirement around that two years minimum. Um, and so if you're interested, but you're not quite at two years yet, that's great. Stay interested, stay in touch, and, and just get a couple more years of experience, and then we'd love to have you apply when you're ready. Um, some information about fellowships and funding. These are questions that always come up um, in terms of what's available for fellowships and for aid with the program. Um, so we offer departmental fellowships and scale scholar fellowships. Those are offered by the SCM department. So if you're admitted to the program, you will in, and we're able to offer you a fellowship, we'll include a letter with your letter of admission that will include your fellowship award. The average award last year was around $8,000, $9,000. Um, so these are not usually full tuition fellowships. Uh, they're, they're for you know as much aid as we can meet, but we're never able to meet the amount of need that there is. So we try and make meaningful contributions to as many students who need aid as we can. 
Um, so those are what are available from the SEM department itself. And those are made, those reviews are made by the admissions committee during the admissions process. There's no separate application for those. You just select, there's a checkbox on your application that says, yes, I am interested in receiving financial aid. Additionally, we've got the Advancing uh, Women in Education Fellowship. Um, that is a supply chain fellowship partnership with the awesome organization. Um, this is a great opportunity. They provide one full tuition fellowship per year to the residential class and one to the blended class. Um, and so if you're interested in that as well, the um, that it, again, you just select that box that I'm interested in financial aid during the application process. There is an additional video component for that, but we send all that information to you after you're admitted to the program. One thing to highlight is that if you're interested in the awesome fellowship, you need to apply in round one or round two of the residential class or round one of the blended class because those decisions, the review process for it are made early in the year. Um, and so round three of residential and round two of blended are too late to be considered for the awesome fellowship. Similarly, there's some other competitive fellowships at MIT that are open to all graduate students. We have a really talented group of students. So every year we tend to get one to two students who receive those fellowships. They're not guaranteed because you are competing against all other graduate students at MIT. Um, we have information about those on our website if you want to review that as well. Some of them have specific eligibility requirements. But again, you need to apply in those early rounds to be considered for those fellowships as well. So the, let me highlight something here, John. So, mm -hmm. uh, I mean, when somebody's asking me, I mean, what should I, I mean, how should I base my decisions for selecting a master program? Then please don't, uh, I mean, uh, bias yourself on the tuition you have to pay at the beginning. You have to pay tuition, yes. There are mechanisms to fund this tuition as, as we are showing here, yes. But think more on the midterm, long-term, right? In our program, the ROI, according to a QS, is not something that we are saying. It's another institution who is saying that our ROI 10 years is almost $1 million. It means that then now you spend the tuition, but imagine, then in again in a 10 month i mean timeline that is not too long right then you are gonna recover this money very quickly mm? according to the figures that we provide according to the recruitment and the value you acquired getting this kind of degree and this kind of knowledge and experience eh? so please don't try to get obsessed with the tuition of course it's important it's a first i mean a step but definitely think more about mid-term long-term what is the average you are going to gain? What are the opportunities you are going to get for the job? And then how you are going to recover this money? And then I can tell you that then it's definitely worth it compared with other programs that will be much, much cheaper, right? But however, then the opportunities you will get after nine months of, of, of paying the tuition will be much lower, right? So this is the kind of, I mean, um, framework you need to implement in order to make your decision, eh? okay? Great, applications deadlines. <clears throat> Perfect, awesome, thanks Maria. So yeah, application deadlines, uh, we are through rounds one and two of residential. Round three, the deadline is March 31st. Make sure to get your application in if you're interested bef before on March 31st because we can't accept um, applications after that date and we do need all of your materials submitted by March 31st. Please don't submit your application incomplete because we can't guarantee that you'll be able to be reviewed and we wanna give you a full review. Um, our decisions are released about a month later, so around April 28th, uh, we'll be releasing decisions for round three of residential. Similarly for blended, uh, the round two, the application deadline is June 20th. Like Maria said, please start working on your application if you're interested and you think you're qualified, even if you haven't taken the CFX yet, but you're planning to take it in May, go ahead and start on your application. Uh, there's no harm in, in getting your letters of reference lined up. It gives you more time if any issues come up to sort those out. And again, decisions are released about a month later, so by July 18th. Um, just to answer a couple of questions that were in the chat yes. around those, um, someone was asking about international students. Uh, it says on our website that you're encouraged to apply in round one or two. Does that mean that international students aren't considered for round three? No, that's not the case. Um, the thing with encouraging international students to apply early is really just to give you the maximum amount of time to get through the visa process if there's any issues. The visa process starts on April 15th, so it's before we've released the decisions for round three. Um, so it gives you the maximum amount of time just in case any visa issues come up, but we do allow 
international students to apply for round three, they are given the same considerate consideration as US students. Um, so there's no there's no reason not to other than just giving yourself the maximum time to get any visa um, issues that might come up sorted out. Uh, and then similarly, so John, uh, I mean, just to clarify, if yeah. you are an international student and you want to apply for, by, for the round three, you can do it because this is why we are doing this kind of selection time in advance before we start formally in August. Yeah. In order to have the visa process. So then definitely, yes, you can apply and that you should apply. Yeah. According to the figures that we provided. Yeah. And the blended. Mm. Yeah, um, and same for the blended. Yeah, it's you can apply in either round. Either is totally fine for international students. Um, someone was asking if there are any specific requirements for international students. Other than the TOEFL, if you're not from an English-speaking country, the, the requirements are the exact same for the international students. Um, and then on the TOEFL front, someone is asking what is now online. You can take the online version of the TOEFL. You don't have to go to the test center and take the in-person version, just to clarify that as well. All right. There are some also some options for waiving the TOEFL, but then only very particular cases that are available in the website. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All okay. Right. Yeah. The MIT experience. We wanted to summarize in a couple of minutes what you are going to find when you will be here. So these are some pictures about what we are doing. So that, for example, the track here, we go to the port of Oakland um, with other, I mean, uh, empty students in order to visit the operations and also in order also to meet the MIT alumni that are there, that are recruiting there. So then sometimes when we go there, then we have recruiting processes um on site i mean in in there in 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 the location we met we will meet with the um, i mean alumni students then this is a picture of our orientation so the one day we go um in august actually is the second day of uh, the uh, orientation uh, period so august second day we want you all of you to all the students to meet to know each other to understand how what is their strengths of everybody and also to enjoy nature so we go to an island this is an island the beautiful is close to boston it's a great experience and then we are doing some team building uh, activities this is the graduation day full of energy in front of the dome mm -hmm. typically with family here and then this is another experience about the yeah woman in supply chain uh, i mean profiles um, then there we are visiting another location here so then why to choose mit so let me give you some facts here so then the way that MIT thinks, the way that MIT challenge idea, progress idea, approach the innovation ecosystem is quite unique. There are different features that highlight uh, why MIT is so impactful. Of course, uh, MIT is world's number one um, uh, in the QS ranking. I think it's nine years in a row. Number of Nobel laureates, you can, I mean, be in the, um, um cafeteria having a Nobel Prize close in the in the I mean uh, table that is close to you or you can attend a class of, of these Nobel laureates which is which is great but not only that I mean um uh, very brilliant minds uh that are uh, here at MIT um also we have investing a lot on AI it was a huge investment, not only from MIT, but also with different key sponsors like IBM in order to develop the future of AI. Uh, some of us, we are working intensively in AI, and this is something that definitely we are firm believers that AI is going to change the world. Huh? And then my preferred feature, uh, of, I would say fact, is uh, this particular one here, that if we will be able to measure the impact of, of MIT Global Alumni, then we could create the 10th largest GDP in the world, right? So this is a good figure in order to show what is the impact that MIT is creating all over the world in order to change the paradigms of the uh, of the future. Huh? So we are in supply chain. We want to impact supply chain operations and logistics. And then if you come here, you will be able to, to join all this impactful uh, effort. So some beautiful pictures of MIT. So these are some of the sport facilities. 
Then uh, this is the Charles River. This is Boston downtown here. We are around here, if I'm not mistaken. Huh? So then um, there we are very close to the city, the downtown. We're very close to also to Cambridge, Harvard, if you go here. This is one of the main corridors of, of MIT, full of energy. This is part of the creativity of the MIT students. And this is part of the cutting edge development of, of our campus. Then we are three minutes far from this building, just to, to, to give you, um, an, in a nutshell, some flavor about MIT. Why to choose MIT? Key factors. I am highlighting here, right? and then we will go to questions very quickly. Uh, you can select what it better fits your needs. We can go to the residential 10 months or hybrid mode with a blended uh, and micro master in five months being at MIT um, with both options with the MIT master degree. I mean, if you compare to MBA program, the return investment is, is much higher in our case. Why? Because we only have 10 months in terms program because supply chain is a hot topic um, and then also because then we have a huge, I mean, um, supply chain management alumni network that leverage all our impact. Uh, residential is OPT STEM certified, so you have this work authorization. We have a cohort experience of 40 students per class in the residential plus another 40 for the blended. So in total, we have 80. 40 residential, 40 blended, yeah. And then student treks to Panama, to Bay Area, or Seattle, USA, or also to the connection with other, I mean, centers all over the world with the scale network, yeah. Here we have the beauty of our um, ambassadors uh, that are joining us. So thank you very much, Hannah, Jorge, Matias, for being with us, it's a pleasure. They are right now at MIT very busy because we are at the middle of the spring term. So next week with some exams and uh, assignments, but maybe we can start with Hannah. Maybe you can share with um, our prospects applicants. Um, um, why did you apply to, to, in your case, to the blended program? Yeah, happy to. Good morning. Um, my name is Hannah Sonnenberg. I'm from Atlanta, Georgia. Um, I decided to apply to the blended program because I thought it was a perfect balance of enhancing my supply chain knowledge, um, especially with the technology aspect of MIT, building my network, um, all as Maria said, with the limited time away from the workforce, in my case, just the five months. Um, and yes, it's been a great experience. Thank you, Anna. Jorge. How did you leverage your supply chain experience together with the with the class uh, um, here at, uh, at MIT with the experience of the class of the SEM program? Maybe you can, I mean, summarize this. Yeah, hi everyone. My name is Jorge Oliver. I am from, from Peru. Yeah, being here at MIT has been an amazing, amazing experience. What is really what is really great here that my cohort there are people around the world. So there are like around 17, 17 countries in my cohort. I am a residential student with different backgrounds. Um, we have different activities. We also have the capstone. So that's a really great opportunity to know uh, your peers and work with that very, very close to the industry. And now, and now in January, the blended program came and they bring a lot, a lot of more experience. So that combination of residential and blended it's, it's really great because the blended people are more senior people. So yeah, they are sharing their experience. And it's been so great. The networking and sense of community is really great. Here. And Jorge, also you um, are with your family here. So it's another another addition, right? To bring this experience of being in Boston, being in the US for your family as well, right? Yeah, yeah, I came with my family. I have two children and yeah, it's been amazing. It's a, uh, it's, a really huge change for my family, but everyone is happy here. Just a very, very particular anecdote if you want, I want to share. My my son came here, he's seven years old. When he came here, he doesn't he didn't speak English. And after four years, after four months, now he speaks better than me. So it's amazing. Yeah. It's a great experience also for all your ecosystem, right? Uh, as yeah. we can measure. Thank you, Jorge. Thank you very much. Matias, Matias was a CTA and the blended program as well. So he has been engaged 
with different angles of MIT. Matthias, could you share the best, I mean, highlights of your experience so far? Um, hi, um, I'm Matthias, and I am happy to share my highlights. And what I think is one of the best things we have done so far was the scale conference in the IAP's uh, period, what Maria said is a three weeks period in the beginning of the semester where so many international students come. We have the students from Luxembourg, we have them from Saragossa and from Colombia. And that's so amazing. You meet so many people from different backgrounds and we had uh, super interesting discussions. So um, that's what I really enjoyed and I, still enjoy the time here with all um, those international people from different countries with different perspectives different experiences and you always meet people uh, who you can learn from so some people learn from you you learn from others this is really amazing here yeah thank you very much please stay connected because if we have some questions from the audience maybe then we will you can also help to answer from your experience right so then, John, let's open time for questions from the audience. Yeah, so please feel free to submit your questions in the Q&A um, for us or for the student ambassadors as well. Um, there's one I can just start off with that I see um, in the program um, or in the Q&A, we've got a question about are applications reviewed first come first serve? No, we don't do rolling app admissions. So once the deadline hits, then we review all of the applications for that round in one go. Um, so we do not do rolling admissions. Um, and similarly, someone was asking about preferences for the GRE or the GMAT with um, hiring. And as far as I'm aware, that doesn't really factor in the GRE or the GMAT is really just for our admissions review. And we don't preference one or the other. Um, and again, you can take supply chain analytics as well. But companies are going to be more concerned with your work experience and your performance in the master's program. They're not going to be as worried about the tests that you took to get into uh, the master's program. Um, yeah, let's there see. There is one we... question about the uh, MicroMaster uh, um, and then with 10 years of work experience and have reached an executive level. Um, so the question is uh, if he is eligible for this uh, blended program. Um, absolutely, yes, yes, totally. But th then you need to finish your MicroMaster degree with a CFX in order to be eligible to apply. Huh? Right. So yes, absolutely yes. So get in contact with us if if you want to clarify more these your particular circumstances. Mm -hmm. Um. So then, um, there are also uh, if we wait, uh, the micromaster performance, undergrad GPA, and work experience, we review the applications holistically. We are not applying any formulation here. Right. Again, why? Because we want to understand why you are a special, why you deserve to, to be in the class. So then we analyze, of course, I mean, all these features that you mentioned, the MicroMaster performance, the grades, and the work experience, your leadership and leadership potential, right, is important. Um, and also, I mean, the, for example, in the case of the blended, the research proposal that you are bringing. So again, but it, it is in a holistic manner. We are not putting any weight on one over over the other. And then let's try to bring your best, right? In order to, to know again who you are uh, in the video, who I mean very naturally who you are with the with your yeah with your best smile, but but not try to to package uh, the videos as, as we mentioned. Um, there's one question, Maria, that I wanted to address that I saw it come up in the chat about employment for international students, the residential versus the blended class. So to clarify, the blended class is not eligible for OPT work authorization. That's the extension of work authorization in the U.S. This is based on U.S regulations. So if you're interested in working in the U.S. after graduation and you're an international student, you should apply to the residential program. Don't apply to the blended because you won't have that U.S. work authorization. Residential students are eligible for up to three years of work authorization with OPT and a STEM extension. And I don't know if Jorge and Matias, I believe you're both international students and Matias, you're in the blended program. Jorge, you're in the residential program. Can you talk a little bit about sort of your looking forward, your um, 
plans for work and it, like Jorge, I'm not sure if you're planning to work, try and work in the US after graduation or not, but just talk a little bit about your kind of career journey at this point. Yeah, yeah, I came with my family because my plan is to take advantage of the LPT, the mm -hmm. three years of the STEM. But basically just to summarize that uh, here in the residential program, uh, the application starts at the beginning of the program. So it was it was amazing. There were some people that was applying. We started the program in, on August 15th, and there were people that applied just two weeks uh, after we started the program. And it, it was amazing because one, one of my friends, she got a, a job like two weeks after we started the program. And there are different things you know, in November, then first in September, October, there are consulting companies, then comes tech companies, and uh, there is a lot of options here. So yeah, that is, is amazing. And, and of course, I mean, they, they start working when they finish, right? So even they receive the offer, let's say, I mean, beginning of September, the case that Jorge mentioned, but they start working after graduation, yeah. <clears throat> Thank you, Jorge. Yeah, and also to comment something quickly. I mean, if you have, if you are a MicroMaster um, holder, you can apply both residential and blended. If you apply to the residential, this means that then you can waive some courses, so then you can expand your exposure. We recognize your knowledge on MicroMaster, but I mean, the more natural way will be the blended, right? In which you come in January here, and then you have more scale and and, and the electives in the spring. Matthias, maybe you can elaborate a little bit more. Um, so on which part? Uh, I mean, in terms of the um, job search. Hmm. Uh, yes, so um, um, I'm an international student in the, in the blended program. So I'm not eligible uh, for work in the US uh, since I'm from Germany. I mean, there are some exceptions if you have certain um, citizenship you can get a visa but uh, Germany is not part of that so I will go back uh, to Germany and um, or basically look uh, for jobs in the European Union with my um, um, degree in the end so this is where I'm authorized to work and they will value um, the masters um, there so and that's what I'm going to do yeah, and also the um, the recruitment uh, office, the professional development office, helps both cohorts. Residential, then you will start from the very very beginning, even earlier, because you will start filling the surveys for leadership and for um, um, all these. I mean, um, recruiting profiles earlier, even in August, right? But if you join the blended, you will start in fall filling all the profiles and then they will provide the service while you are here but not only when when you leave right even the recruiting service will continue providing service long life right so you belong to the MIT family and then you will get access to the recruitment service for all your life yeah mm -hmm. Maria can, can I can I add something yes please absolutely mm -hmm. yeah yeah just to mention that there are refer different career fairs so even though you don't have the option to work here there are career fairs from Europe, from Asia. And regarding LATAM, there are the, the most uh, important companies came here, not, not to Boston, but there are some recruiting process, for instance, Palabella, McKinsey. And what is really what you have to consider that we apply to jobs that also the MBA people apply. So even though we just have one year of program, we can apply to those to those jobs. So we are, yeah, we are basically taking advantage of the master and we just one year program as Maria Jesus says said so yeah that's that's really good for us thank you Jorge we have a couple of questions um then um Mostafa is has been working in the area of supply chain and manufacturing systems for several years is this considered experience absolutely yes <laughs> yeah we we want to bring your supply chain experience into the class yeah John any answer any question you want to answer no, I think we're just about out of time. It's 11.03, actually. We've just gone a few minutes over, um, so I don't want to hold anyone up, but I think this um, we've covered sort of the basics. If you have more questions, again, feel free to reach out to our, our email or give us a call. Um, we're happy to, to field your yeah. questions. I know there's a lot of specifics around the application details that you might have some questions about, and feel free to explore the website um, as well, since everything should be on there. 
Uh, this session was recorded. There was a question about that. So we will make that recording available. We should put it up on our website. It'll take a little bit of time for us to get it processed, but as soon as it's available, we'll post it to our website if you want to re revisit or, or if you joined late and want to catch the beginning of it. Um, and I'll just thank our SEM ambassadors, Hannah, Matias, and Jorge. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, we really appreciate your insight on the program um, and, and uh, also your future contributions as an alumni, which is coming right up. It's right around the corner. So... Thank you again thank for joining you. us. Yeah, thank you very much, everybody. Thank you to the attendant. Thank you, John, and thank you, the, the ambassadors. Uh, to all of you, hopefully we will, I mean, review your application soon. Let us know if we can be a further help. Bye-bye. Have a good weekend, everybody. Bye. Bye. Have a good weekend and reach out to us if you have questions, want to know anything. Um, we are here to answer questions and we'll be happy. So, thanks. Have a good weekend, everyone. Thank you.